Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, Simple Social PR Strategies, uh, How to Land Big Media for Your Small Business. This is Donna Cravata, and I am the CEO of Social Sage PR, and I am the creator of the Total Social PR System. And um, this is something that I've put together over the course of many years of working, and I want to share these strategies with you. Um, my clients are having amazing success, and I want to share that with you as well. So um, we're just going to dive right in. Um, we are going to, um, the presentation is going to be about an hour, and then um, we're going to have about 30 minutes of open Q&A. So if you have any questions at all, um, just put some questions in the chat box or wait until we get to the Q&A portion, and we'll open up the, call, the, the lines for you to ask questions. But as we go through the presentation, I'm going to keep the lines muted. Um, so, um, you know, just... Sit back, relax, and, and enjoy the show because I'm really excited about um, sharing this with you. So just to introduce myself, my name is Donna Cravata, and I created Social Sage PR and the Total Social PR system to empower entrepreneurs by showing them how to use social media and public relations to explode their online presence. Um, Social Sage PR is my company, and we help our clients with social media setup and strategy, public relations, getting noticed, and building relationships with the media and their target market online. This is so important. And what I like to call this combination of social media and PR, social PR. And what that is, it's a strategic combination of traditional media and social media, and it's a unique way to approach, approach publicity. It is authentic, and it totally re represents who you are. You cannot fail when you do this, right? And the results are staggering and really fast. Um, it's a way to build a targeted online relationship and, and it build your credibility as an expert in, um, in the media. Um, it also helps you to connect with the media professionals in your industry and your target market, which ultimately builds your business and your bottom line. Um, it's a way to create a level of comfort and trust around you and around your brand. So what we believe in, we believe that social media is the um, future of public relations and engagement. And we, um, we build relationships and community, and um, we do this all online, and we, we, we work um, quite a bit about um, how to start and join the right conversations online. It's about um, knowing what your message is and who your market is and being really clear. When you're clear on these things, you eliminate all of the chatter that is going on online, and you find yourself in the relationships and the conversations that are meaningful to you and your business. And um, we also believe in the golden rule. The golden rule, we all learned this in kindergarten. Um, our moms taught this to us. And it's, you know, do unto others as others would do unto you. So basically, if you treat people the way you want to be treated, um, what you get back in return is just, it, it's golden. I mean, it, it just really works. It really works. Um, and our philosophy, our, the philosophy behind social PR is to not be afraid to be yourself to use your own voice and to share your brilliance. Social PR is not advertising. It's all about sharing your expertise through consistent branding, being visible to your target market via public relations and social media, by building an online relationship, not just connecting, not, not just saying you'll know, follow me, but to build that relationship with your target market and establishing your credibility as an expert in the media. You encourage their um, comfort level with you, your services, and your brand. So um, I'm going to keep going back to the relationship and the conversation. These are two key elements in um, building out your brand online, building out your personal brand online as, as an individual. Um, I will also refer to my clients as social PR celebrities, and, um, and I would love for you to become a social PR celebrity too. So social PR, basically, it's priceless. Um, if you take a look at what advertising rates are on magazines, on a radio show, um, on, on a blog, the, the fees are very, very high. If you could land yourself some free media 
it, it's going to put you into the stratosphere quickly and right in front of your target audience. So um, we're going to go in and we're going to start with social media. So social media, tweets and likes, these are the two, you know, Facebook and Twitter are the two biggies, but, you know, we go through all of the different social media sites. So social media is no longer an option in business. Instead of doing it for you, um, we prefer to show you how it's done right. I am a big believer in you building this into your business to make this a sustainable piece of your business where it, it, it over and over again, you can build these skills into everything you do, whether it be a blog post, a website update, you know, even as small as a social media post. When you do this right consistently, it comes back tenfold. When you have to pay professionals to do this for you, it costs you thousands of dollars, and they're not you. They don't understand your business the way you do. So you need to know a fraction of the knowledge that they know, and you can do this right in your business. Um, so if you have a good strategy, a good plan, um, you could easily make the time spent online worthwhile. And you can build this into the fabric of your business and save a fortune. It's, I mean, I, I am seeing people do this every single day, and I, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I get too excited, but I just get so, I, I get so excited about this. Um, so get media. Getting media um, is the fastest and most cost-effective way to get noticed. And if you're really targeted with this, you're going to get noticed by the people that count the most. So, but there's also a right way and a wrong way to contact the media. Once you know the right way, the opportunities will keep flowing. Um, once you start pitching the media, um, if you're good at this and you are consistent and you give them exactly what they look for, um, you quickly go from being the person that is pitching to being the person that is wooed. <laughs> so um, it happens fast, too. Um, the opportunities will keep flowing. It's all about building relationships with the media that you want to connect with. It's not about having a press release pitching this out to hundreds of people. It's about finding a handful of people that you would want to write about you and building a relationship with them, and we're going to talk more about that. So do you have any doubts? Um, do you wonder, will spending time on social media make me money? Can I really build a targeted following? Is national publicity realistic for me? Isn't media just for the big brands? Well, I know you're busy. I know you are. I am too, but it could be done. If you can do this, if I could do this, you could do this, and I'm going to show you how. And this is how you can do it, and you can do it. And um, I'm going to break down the big and cluttered world of social media and PR. I'm going to simplify this. It is so attainable for you. The good news is you don't need to hire an expensive PR firm and shell out thousands of dollars per month. And I'm going to add to that. You don't need to hire SEO experts, and you don't need to hire high-end social media managers either. You can do this. Um, what we are going to go through is the strategy. Once you know the strategy, you could bring on hand help you implement, but you are the owner of your business. Nobody knows your business the way you do. You can't give away your strategy. You can't give away your voice, and you can't give away your message. Those are all the things that are crucial to running a, a successful business. And when you have a business online, it's even more important that you claim ownership of that because in many cases you're not going to meet the people that you're interacting with. So um, you have to go that extra bit to really show who you are and be authentic when you're doing business online. Um, I'm going to show you how. So let's take that first step onto the yellow brick road. Um, the first thing that you need to know, you need to know your message, your market, your brand, and your goals. Once you know these things and you're really clear on them, you build them into the whole strategy around your social media presence and your um, media presence. And the people, this corresponds directly to the people that you want to connect with. So the message corresponds directly to what they're talking about. You want them to understand your message and you want to be able to get into their conversations. The market, you want to know who these people are and where they're hanging out online. So if you're not clear on your market, you're not going to be clear on where you're going to find them. So you really need to know who these people are and do a little bit of research. And it's not, it doesn't, I'm going to share tools with you that make this super, super easy. But you need to know 
you know, what your message is and who these people are and where they're hanging out. Um, your brand. You don't, it, I'm not talking about a logo. I'm talking about when you step into your brand and it wraps itself around you. You become one with your brand. It's, it's now a personal brand. We're all small business owners, and our businesses are, are just extensions of who we are. I would venture to say that most of us have started this business due to something that's happened in our lives. You know, we've had some kind of pain or crisis or, you know, we lost a job. I mean, something happened to make us want to do this business because we all know it's not easy having a business. This is, this is, this is up there with raising a child. It's hard work. So, you know, when you really need to be one with your brand. And um, that's really um, living your message, living everything that you do. There, there is no longer a divide between you know, your work life and your personal life. When you're an entrepreneur the way we are, you're in the trenches 24-7. This is full contact. And um, once you step into that brand and it wraps itself around you, you speak about it in a different way, and you know when it happens. So if that has not yet happened for you, I I, I, I encourage you and I challenge you to, to really study it, live with it, breathe it, <laughs> you know, just soak it into your skin and become one with your brand because once you do that, everything else is easy. And your goals, you need to know what your goals are and to be realistic about them. I mean, be realistic about the size of your business and what it can handle. I mean, if you're a, a, a solopreneur with very limited resources, you know, saying I want to be on the morning show might not be a realistic um, goal at this point because you need to build You're on the morning show. You're going to get tons of traffic to your website. It's going to shut down. You sell products. Do you, can, you, can you go into full force mode and you know, go from producing a few products a month to producing a, you know, thousands? So be realistic about what your goals are and, um, and, and you know, set them so you can grow with So your, your goals and your successes will grow together. Um, no like and trust. This is so important. Again, with small business owners, we're contacting. We, we want to connect with small business owners, for the most part. And you know, people want to do business with people, not a logo. They want to do pe business with a face. So you want to build trust with consistent branding, messaging, interactive interaction, and by giving. And um, this is a great quote from Zig Ziglar. If people like you, they'll listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. And um, the way that I like to build out social media is all about building trust and all about building a safe place and a comfortable place to form a relation. Um, so we're going to start with branding. Um, branding is so important, and you, you must, must, this is not a negotiable <laughs> um, element of this. You must consistently brand your social media. Use the same engaging headshot across social channels on your profile images. Don't put your logo. Don't put a picture of your dog. Put your face eye contact. In many cases, this is going to be your first introduction to somebody. You get one first impression. Make it really good. It's not that much more work to make everything look good. When everything looks good, you up-level yourself, you up-level your professionalism, and you up-level the trust. So um, you know, t take that little extra step. It doesn't cost a lot of money to get you know professional uh, graphics done. Um, you can use free tools like Canva or PicMonkey to to create um, graphics on your own. But I would get the elemental pieces, pictures, your know, headshot, pictures of your programs and products, your logos. Get those done professionally, and then you can kind of mix and match them. Um, your branding, colors, logos, and fonts must be consistent throughout. Um, and everything's got to have the same look and feel. What you're doing when you do this, there is a psychology behind this. And you are creating, uh, um, with every step that somebody comes further and further into your online presence, you're creating trust and you are creating um, um, a, a level of expertise. And, you know, they, they don't know that you're working in your kitchen. <laughs> they don't need to. Um, so you know, just um, you know, make sure that you, you're, you're putting out your most professional presence. And um, you know, if 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 you're not sure, 
to send me an email. I'm happy to look at it. I really want you, it's so important because so often what will happen is people will find you when they need you. They often need you in the middle of the night, okay? You know, you know where many of us are in, are in industries where, you know, we're serving people um, that need help. So um, when they come and they find you, they're going to look around at all of your different um, online elements at their own pace. So they're going to go from Facebook to Twitter to LinkedIn to your website. And as they move from space to space, if everything has the same look and feel, you're growing that level of comfort, you're growing the trust, they want to know more. But if, if you know, it could just be a different headshot or it could be the colors wrong or you use a different font and they're like, oh, wait, wait, that doesn't feel good anymore. So and, and the results that I'm seeing with my clients is the people that go through and really make sure that everything looks and feels great. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect and you can change it as you go along, but, you know, really put, a, a, you know, an, an effort into this. They're getting instant results. I mean, I've had clients in like one day <laughs> they've had results. So, um, you know, it, it's really important to do. Messaging, be consistent with your messaging. This is... Um, this is just my little bio underneath my Facebook cover image, and um, it's got keywords built in there. It tells you what I do. It's got a link to my website. Um, it says I teach entrepreneurs innovative, innovative ways to use social media, to use social media and PR to build relationships with clients in the media. Um, people will find me because of this. Um, and if you're consistent throughout, it's not like, you know, for LinkedIn I do one thing and for Twitter I do something else. You want this all to be consistent. Um, you're, and and that's, this doesn't just mean your, you know, your bios and, and things like that. This means the messaging that you put out there. When your posts and your comments, you know, you shouldn't use the same you know, words every single time, but, you know, be consistent. The more consistency that you can provide to people, the more they're going to trust you. Um, interaction. It's so important to join conversations, build relationships. These, these, these conversations are happening already. And if you can just land in this conversation and have the answers to hundreds of the people that need your services, I mean, what's better than that? <laughs> and you could do this for free. <laughs> Um, um, don't just post content. Listen. Listening to social media is probably the most important thing that you could do and observe. See who's connecting with who. See what, what keywords are they talking about. What are the hashtags? A hashtag is something that anchors a conversation. So if, if you have a group of people talking about a hashtag and that word of that hashtag is something that is relevant in your industry, you now have a captive audience of people that are talking about your topic. So, you know, just get into that conversation. And, and, and once you're in that conversation, start looking around. See who these people are. See who their friends are. See what they like. See what links they share. Because the links that they share are probably written by the media that you would want to report on you. <laughs> so it's all a very tight little spider web once you get out of the noise. And I'm going to show you how we can get out of the noise. Um, engage in the conversations online as you would in real life. So every time you go in, you pretend this is a networking event. This is my own little private networking event that I've created for myself. This isn't just, oh, i got to go do my Facebook posts. This is about engagement. It's not about you know, just posting stuff up and, 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 and pushing things out there. It's about really connecting with people. Um, giving. You only get what you give away. It is so true. So be very generous with what you share, whether it is your knowledge, your relationships, your resources. Connect people. You know, in Twitter, it's so easy to do. If you at mention one person and at mention somebody else in the same post, they're connected. So, you know, just say, hey, at mention you know, Jody, I think you really need to know at mention Steve. And now Jody and Steve are connected. So when you do that, you give. When you give, you get back. And this whole universal rule works magically on social media. Relationships, this is how you build the relationships, by sharing, by giving, by connecting people. So you're creating your own customized networking event, and you can attend it whenever you like, and you're inviting the people that you want to be there. So um, it's, it's really it's amazing. Um, one of the strategies that I really love is um, let's say there's an event that you want to go to, and it's 
two thousand miles away, and there's no way you're there's no way it's happening. Okay, you just follow the hashtag for that event. Every event has a hashtag, and you're in the conversations with the speakers at that event, the um, the the planners of that event, the hosts of that event, the attendees of that event. You're essentially there. So you can connect with all of these people and never leave your house. So it's a really good way to do that. And um, um, and then you know, once once you're in there and you're in those conversations, you know, you, things happen. Things just happen. I know of people that would that did that, and like a speaker dropped out at the last minute, and they were invited to speak. So now they're speaking at an event that they just thought that they would never even get to attend, <laughs> just by spending a few minutes on social media. Um, and managing. Okay, this is crucial. Um, if you are not using a social media management tool, you're using about 10% of what you can be using in social media. You will not get social media success without using a tool. The tool that I use is Hootsuite. There are a ton of them out there. They're all great. I've tried many of them. I just keep coming back to Hootsuite. It's, I've used it probably for four or five years now. Um, the free version works just fine. If you need, you know, to add some more, it'll be good up to five social media sites. But if you need more than that, the paid version is only ten dollars a month, and it will literally change your business. Um, you need to monitor what's going on in social media, and in Hootsuite or any of the other um, uh, management accounts, management. Um, softwares, you can create a dashboard. And what you do in this dashboard is you bring the conversations to you. You bring the influencers to you. You bring the conversations around the hashtags to you. And then you shut everything else out. When I do social media, I don't go into Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. I do it all in Hootsuite for several reasons. One, it's not as much fun. <laughs> it's not as pretty. So you don't get distracted as much. You could be much more targeted. Um, doing this in Hootsuite. And then once you define the dashboard and you make it you know, your own personal networking event, when you go in there, all you're seeing is what is relevant to you. So you can really do this in 15, 20 minutes, once or twice a day, and make a huge difference in your business. My clients are connecting with people. They are changing their businesses because they're finding people that they didn't even know existed. They're finding whole like pools of people that they didn't know existed. It's just it's amazing what is out there. One of my clients says to me that it's like the Caribbean Ocean. She goes, you, you Caribbean Sea. She goes, you you look out and it's beautiful and it's you know, soothing and calming and you know you just want more of it. And then you look under the surface. And it's teeming <laughs> with everything that you need. <laughs> so um, it's, it's amazing. This is the piece of your business that is business intelligence. It, will, it, it, it is what will drive everything. This is not something you can outsource. There are tons of tasks that you can outsource to other people. But as a business owner, you need to drive your dashboard. You can't be in the passenger seat and drive your car. So it's the same thing. You need to be in the driver's seat. You need to drive your dashboard. You could have you could have a navigator next to you, you know, looking at the maps and changing the radio station and doing all these things for you, but you need to drive it. So what you do in a social media dashboard, um, it's about you and your company. You want to you want to know what people are saying about you. So you're going to run searches real-time searches that just keep going <laughs> about you and your company, about your competitors, your keywords, conversations you want to be in, and the hashtags that anchor those conversations. Um, it is so important. It, events, if you are, let's say you're on a telesummit, um, you know, start tracking what all of the speakers on the telesummit are talking about. Share with each other. I mean, I, it, before I started doing this, I would be on telesummits with people, and it would be like, oh, nice, we're connected for two weeks, and then we're not connected anymore. But now what I do is I build relationships while, with these people while we're co-speakers on a telesummit, and we have real relationships now. And some of these people, you know, when you typically on a telesummit, they've got these big high-end people. They've got the middle, the middle people, and then they've got the lower people. And I've been on that lower people rank for a while, but I'm moving up because I'm creating relationships with these people. And what's happening is they're doing telesummits, and then they're inviting me, and they're inviting me in on a higher level. So it's, it's so important to use these opportunities to build the relationships. I keep going back to the relationships and the conversations because those are the corners stones of having a business, any business. You know, I mean, if you have a store, when somebody walks into
to your store, you're going to be pleasant, you're going to be nice to them. It's the same thing online. This is your storefront. Um, and this is what Hootsuite looks like. It's kind of hard to see because it's small, but it's, it's columns. And you customize these columns. And what I want you to visualize is that these are columns that are related to your business. So you're looking at this information all condensed in front of you in one screen. And um, you, know, you have different tabs for different things, and you organize it properly. And, and um, you know, this information is coming to you. So just envision that these are, your, these are your people. These are the people that are talking about things that are important to you. These are the people that, um, that have problems, that you can solve their problems, right? Um, you know, so you could spend 15 minutes here, and if you respond to three or four people that you have the answer to their problem, that's pretty cool. Um, so this is what they look like, and um, you know you can set them up really any way that you want. Um, one of the really cool features in Hootsuite is you can set up these search columns based on different criteria. So you put in a keyword. Let's say the keyword is social media. Okay. So you can put in social media and a question mark, and it's going to call up all of the tweets that have the word social media, and somebody's asking a question. You can call up the word social media with a, uh, with a frowny face, and you're going to call up all of the negative social media posts. And if you do a smiley face, you're going to call up all the positive social media posts. And one of the things that I have noticed pretty consistently is that when people are talking um, online in a positive way, they end up being your friends, your influencers, your joint venture partners, um, you know, the people that you want to collaborate with. When they're speaking in a negative way, you, those are your clients. So, I mean, if you have streams coming up of all people talking negatively about stuff in your industry, that means that they have a problem. They, they, you know, they, they've got an issue. You've got the answer. You can turn them around. It's so important to be able to have these conversations coming to you because when you just go into Twitter, they get lost. It moves so fast. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of tweets every minute, and you know you lose them. You'll never see them. But when you but when you um, when you pull these conversations to you, they each one is a golden nugget. Um, so hashtags. I want to talk a little bit about hashtags because hashtags really they anchor those conversations. Okay, so um, you can join new conversations by searching for um, and using hashtags on trending topics. Um, and you could do this in Twitter, in Facebook, um, in Instagram, in Pinterest. The only place hashtags are not widely used are in LinkedIn. It's more of a polished business um, site. And um, twubs is a, twubs.com is a very cool site. It's a hashtag registration site. So you can register your own hashtags and start the conversations. You could search for trending hashtags and find conversations that are already happening that you can get into. And you could also um, set up a tweet chat. And you can create this branded space you know, with whatever imagery you want, and have a tweet chat where you can invite people to have a little conversation with you on Twitter. And this is a great way to grow your, you know, grow your following, um, and you know, get people interested in your products, and people will share it. And um, it's a good way to kind of tap into other people's markets. So um, that's a great thing to do, and it's all free. <laughs> um, now, hashtagify.me is another site that I absolutely love because once you find those hashtags. You just go over to hashtagify.me, which is another free site. You put your hashtag in there, and it creates this little spider web. So you, it, you have the hashtag in the middle, and then all around it are different options that you could use for the same word, alternatives. So um, now instead of just one conversation that you found, you can have you know, 10 different conversations <laughs> around your topic with different words. So you can get into these different conversations, and they could be totally different groups of people. Um, all over the world, so it, it's really it's really very cool. But hashtags are key. You need to use them to find the different conversations and join them. Um, tagging on Facebook, this is a great strategy, and also again to start and join conversations. Let's say you're at an event and you know somehow you got into a picture with Mari Smith. You know you don't know how you did that. You tag Mari Smith. Now all of Mari Smith's followers know you were at an event with Mari Smith. <laughs> That's pretty cool, um, you know. And you know, it doesn't have to be Mari Smith. Like, insert your influencer, whoever that might be. She's one of my influencers. Um, 
um, tag photos, videos, and more. So whatever you're putting up there, if there's somebody else involved, you can tag them. Again, you know, you want to be polite. You don't want to just tag people and be obnoxious. You don't want to tag, you know, a celebrity over and over and over and over again when you have nothing to do with them. But um, it's a great way to connect with people and their audience. People tend to comment and share when they're tagged. Oh, they'll thank you, or they just know who you are. So if you want somebody to know who you are, tagging is a good way to do it. Um, be yourself. I, I, it never ceases to amaze me how in 140 characters or less, people can tell when it's not you. I did social media management for years, and I pretended to be all kinds of people. <laughs> and, um, you know, for the most part, they know when it's not you. I mean, it's fine to have somebody else go and schedule, you know, you know, pretty generic posts for you. Um, but when you um, have somebody else, you know, doing this for you, and they're trying to take your conversation, they're trying to take the of who you are and present it online, people. Yep. So um, I would highly recommend um, just being who you are. Um, share things too. Um, share stuff like the music that you like, books that you like to read, um, videos, movies, things like that. People want a glimpse into who you are. You don't have to share like deeply personal stuff, but just like I love dogs, I like the beach, um, you know, I just saw this great movie, whatever. Uh, this listen to Sp I listen to Spotify during the day, and every once in a while I pop up a song that I like, and people people are interested in what you're listening to, and they like bad '70s music. You know, listen to the Partridge Family. You'll get new you'll get new visitors. <laughs> you'll get people commenting. Um, a throwback Thursday. Thursday. I mean, there are different days of the week where you, you celebrate different things on social media. So on Throwback Thursday, if you just you know post up a, a Partridge Family song, hashtag TBT for Throwback Thursday, you're going to start getting into different conversations because that hashtag Throwback Thursday is going to put you into different um, different groups of people. Um, and it's fun. You know, sometimes during the day things aren't so much fun. This is a quick, easy way to have some fun. Um, you need to build it. It's not rocket science. It's not a big deal to do. You need to have a social media presence, so you might as well build it right. When you do, the opportunities just come to you. Um, and you want to be found. When you build it right, you're found. Um, and the way that I see it is it's better to spend that time up front, invest the time, invest whatever money you need to invest, do it right, and then you sit back because it comes to you. You don't have to spend all that time efforting. It just comes to you, and um, it happens really quickly. So um, here are a couple of strategies for being found. Include links to your social media accounts in your email signature. There's, um, there's a, a site called wisestamp.com. This is my email signature. It's got a link. To, it's got my headshot so people see who I am. It's got a little conversation bubble around me. They know I like to talk. Um, it's got my email, it's got my website. You can go to my Facebook page, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you see my last tweet. My last tweet, you can now retweet that, you can comment, you can, you know, it's, it's an interactive signature. It's not just a standard um, um, image. And this will show up on mobile devices, this will show up on iPads. So, you know, you're, you're engaging every time you send an email. Um, in bio boxes and blogs on other sites, so if you're commenting on people's blogs, make sure that you have your, your profile, like if you're commenting through your blog or through Discus or through any of these other sites, make sure that you have a bio box set up because then every time you comment, it's going to have your information at the bottom. It will have links to your website. It will have your headshot. It will have a bio about who you are and what you do. Every time you do this, you, it's free advertising. You're putting yourself out there, and you're connecting yourself um, to, um, you know, to, to, to more people because you know, you, other people are reading this blog. You don't know who else is coming to somebody's site. And when you comment on like, very highly trafficked blogs, you know, you're open up to anybody. I mean, th th this is one of the things that I love the most about social media. It levels the playing field. You now have the same opportunities to meet anybody that anybody else does. I mean, you don't have to be a celebrity to meet a celebrity. You don't have to meet, be a big 
political bigwig to meet another big political bigwig. It levels the playing field. You can get into these conversations. Also, be sure when you have printed materials, business cards, brochures, flyers, you include your social media info on there so people can find you. Um, meeting the media. Connect with journalists on social media. This is where they are. They don't want you blasting a press release out to hundreds of journalists. They want to see who you are and what you're up to. They want to see what you're talking about, who you're connected to. And this is where they hang out. And you can do the same. You can see who they are and who they're talking to, what they're talking about, what their audience is talking about. Because if there's a journalist that you want to write about you, their audience is your audience. They've already gathered that audience for you. So just by connecting with this journalist on Twitter, you are now connected to his audience or her audience on Twitter. You could start following their audience and bring them over to your world. So it's so important to really know who these people are. The other thing is, is they're getting bombarded bombarded with emails. They're not reading the emails. They're, they're, they're connecting through, through social media. So if you create a relationship with a media professional on Twitter, and I'm talking about a – it's very easy to do. You share their blog posts. You comment on their blog posts. You retweet something. You, ref, you, you connect them with someone because they'll, put, they'll post up on Twitter if they're looking for, you know, if they need a resource for something. So let's say they need, a, a, you know, an expert in whatever it is. It's, it's not what you do, but you know someone who does it. You just at mention. At mention, journalists I want to meet. Meet, um, <laughs> insert name, <laughs> you know, at insert name. They are an expert in this, and you're, you know, this is what you're looking for. So now you've connected those people. They remember. This is their job. Their, jo their job is to put pieces together. So they put pieces together um, all day long. And when you're the person that they can rely on, whether they wrote about you or not, you will now become a trusted media resource. Once you become a media resource, they keep coming back to you because they don't have time. Some of these people are so busy. They're like working. Many are, are freelancers at this point, and they're working for four and five publications, which means they have four and five deadlines going at the same time. They need you more than you need them. So what you want to do is you want to talk to them in their language. You want to you want to be able to give them exactly what they need, and you want to always be available. <laughs> and social media is the best way to do that because through Hootsuite you can track them. Um, so they need experts like you. They're mostly on Twitter. Follow them and share their content. Create a private media, media Twitter list and follow it in Hootsuite. Um, and that's just creating a Twitter list, making it private, because um, you have an option of making your list private or public. For this, I would say make it private and follow, add the journalists that you want to connect with to that list. And in one of those um, streams in Hootsuite, you're going to see everything that they post. So you're going to get all of, you know, all of their tweets, and it makes it really easy for you to go in and share their information. Once you have three or four contacts with this person, you now have a relationship. Um, SEO and keywords. Keywords are often your hashtags. And um, these are the words that people are using to find you, to find people like you, to find your influencers, the people you want to be when you grow up in your business. And they're really important to know what they are. People will charge you thousands of dollars to find out what these words are, but you could do it by yourself. Um, and you could do it using the um, Google Keyword Tool. Um, and um, you know, just the other thing that you can do is you can just keep note of the words. When let's say you're talking to a potential client, um, what are the words that kind of catch them? What are the words that make them emotional? In many cases, those end up being your keywords. And when you take those words and you build them into the titles of your blog posts, the titles of your programs, um, your social media posts, um, your website content, every time somebody searches for those words, they find you. And it's, it's really amazing. So um, I think that um, just having a little bit of knowledge, it's a, I mean, it, I know it sounds intimidating, but it, you know, it's not like full-blown, you know, takes six months to create SEO analysis. But just doing a couple of searches um, and, and knowing how to use the, the Google Keyword Tool, um, Hashtagify, going back to that, is a really good tool for finding keywords because, as I said, the keywords are often your hashtags. You know, 
they're just seeing those words that people are talking about that connect them um, you know, to these conversations, those are the words you want to build into your content. Also, um, looking at the, key, the, the hashtags and the keywords that the media professionals use that, would want to, that you would want to report on you, these, and their audience as well. Like, what are their audience participants, like, what are they talking about? These are the words you want to use because they're using those words. So that they, that's what they're searching for. That's what's on their mind. Um, you want to know what those words are and track them in Hootsuite because when you're tracking them in Hootsuite, you're tracking those conversations and you could easily just land in them. Um, content. Content is king. Um, Google has made many changes in the last couple of months, and um, it used to be you can just kind of spam things. You can't do that anymore. Google wants you to write content, and they want you to write good content. Um, once you have that good content, you could reuse it in different ways, like you could write blog posts and articles and make them into social media posts, um, things like that. But you know, you're a publisher. Everybody is a publisher now. We all have some place to share our, our, our words. And um, you want a publisher. You don't want to be a shoddy one. So write good content. Get help if you need help. You know, hire a copywriter. Buy PLR content, which is privileged. Uh, I can never say this right. Priv pli uh, privileged right. Um, uh, oh, I, priv I, I'm not saying it. PLR content. Just search it. <laughs> but you can buy it. It's not expensive, and it's a starting point for um, and what it is. It's basically you buy the rights to pre-written content. And um, then you can modify it. And there's a certain amount of licenses per piece that's written, so it's not you know plastered all over the place. And um, and you can you could modify that. Um, share great content from a variety of sources. So start following um, you know I follow Mashable and Social Media Examiner and Mari Smith and um, Pete Cashborn and all of these people, and I share their content because they're brilliant and they know this stuff, and they usually know this stuff before everybody else does. So I share their stuff. So have a handful of influencers that you can share their information, and again, track them in Hootsuite. So it's really easy to share their stuff. You build com you build relationships with people when you share their information. So you don't have to just like you know worship them from afar anymore. These people can become your friends. <laughs> It's really cool. Um, and comment on interesting articles and posts. Um, be the expert. Offer advice on Q&A sites like Yahoo Answers, Ask.com, eHow, and AskMill. And there are more. The, those are just a few. Um, submit an application to become one of their experts. They all need content. They are, they're, they're desperate for content. If you, and, and, and so many people don't even think to, to submit an application. Um, Search and I'll just go on their websites, and you know there's there's a tab somewhere to submit an application. Um, search for questions that you can answer on social media, and then respond. And this is where that question mark feature in Hootsuite comes in handy, because you could find people that are asking questions and just just answer their question. Um, another place that's good to go find questions is in groups, in, both in Facebook and LinkedIn. People will often ask questions there. So just go in and, and um, search for some questions. And it, it's as easy as searching for, you know, they, they, all of these sites have like criteria, searching criteria. So go and look and see what the searching criteria it is. It's often like, you know, quotes around a word and then quotes around another word. So if you put quotes around a word and quotes around a question mark, it's going to come back with the results um, with all the posts with that word question mark. And um, you know, then if you get three or four of those, it doesn't even need to be a lot. Three or four of those, you answer the questions. You're answering these questions, and countless people are seeing it. So it's putting you, it's, it's building an entire audience for you. Um, here are a couple um, yeah. where you can get um, um, free media opportunities. You can get um, um, emails that come to you where the media is actually looking for experts on certain things. One is HARO. Um, it's actually help out a reporter, help a reporter out com, and um, just sign up there. They're going to try and sell you everything under the sun. You don't need to buy anything. You'll get three emails a day. Um, it, uh, any given day, you'll get a, a hundred different options of, uh, of of different opportunities that that journalists need help with. Um, 
Um, ProfNet is paid, I think it's about $1,200 a year now. Um, um, I have that. Uh, you, you don't need to get that, but I, I have that, and I share a lot of those opportunities in my program. Um, pitch rate is another one that's free or paid. Again, just use the free one. You'll get emails every day with all kinds of opportunities. Source Bottle, another one that's free, and they're located in Australia. Many of their opportunities are international opportunities. So if you're looking to build um, a media presence or a client base in Europe or Australia or Asia, um, it's a good place to sign up because they have um, many different opportunities all across the world. RadioGuestList.com. Great. They send you lists. Um, well, they change their. I don't know if it's free anymore. I, I, but it's like three dollars a month. It's it's basically free. But they'll send you lists of all of these internet radio shows and podcasts that need guests. Um, and one of the other things that they do that's really cool is they have this promoted ad feature. It's $200 for the first month and then about $30 a month thereafter. And um, they'll do a whole feature on you and send it out to their list of like thousands and thousands of people. Um, and I've done this with clients and have landed tons of radio interviews for them in a short period of time. Really good to do around a product launch or a book launch or something like that. Um, after the first month, I've noticed that it falls off and you start getting like, you know, invitations to speak on radio shows for the occult. Um, so, you know, unless that's something you're interested in doing, <laughs> um, you know, you just, I, what I've done is just canceled after the first month. But it's totally worth a $200 investment. Uh, and you get to write it, so you can build in your keywords, and you can build in, you know, you can build it, you can have it say what you want it to say. Um, muckrack.com, free and paid. The, free, the, the paid version is like $100 a month. But I recommend the free version. What this is, is this is like a hub for the journalists. They have profiles on there. So you can go search for journalists in your industry and read their profile and know everything that they like. So when you pitch them, you can be a little personal in your pitches. Um, um, and you can you know, see everything they're connected to. Maybe they're connected to a cause that you wouldn't have known about. And you could start following that cause. And maybe you could tie that into your pitch. So the more that you could know about the journalists, I have gone to tons of Meet the Media events. And you know, at any event, if there's media there, I always ask them questions because I want to know the best of them, the best way to, you know, for my clients to get in front of them and get their attention. And, um, Consistently, they say that they just want to be treated like people. They want people to know their work. Um, you know, if they've got a show on that's on 10 o'clock in the morning, don't pitch them at 10 o'clock in the morning because to them, that's saying you don't really care about what I do. You just want me to sell your stuff. Um, so, you know, don't treat them as a funnel to advertising. Treat them as a human being, and you'll get so much more out of it. We go back to the golden rule. <laughs> Um, and pitching the media, okay, I, I just segued myself. Um, when you pitch the media, you want to keep it short. Give them exactly what they want. So let's say you get a HARO listing, and you're kind of on the fence if you're the right person to do that or not. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. There'll be another one. You don't want to, when they're putting out something on one of those um, you know, media requests, they need you. They don't have any time for anything. They need a story. They need a resource. They need something, and they don't have time for anything else. They've got total tunnel vision. They've got deadlines. You know, they've got. There's no time for any nonsense. They're reaching out because they need help. So if you're not the person to help them for that, wait. If it's somebody that writes in your industry and you'd like to pitch them about something else, start building the relationship. Go find them on Twitter. Start following them. Start reading their articles. But don't pitch them for something unrelated. Um, Honor the deadlines. A deadline is a deadline. If you send them something, you know, 10 minutes after their deadline, this story had to be in 10 minutes ago. Deadlines are real. So when you um, start pitching things after the deadline, you're showing that, you know, you, you're not being respectful of their time. Um, only pitch if you can deliver the goods. So let's say you're halfway done with your book. Don't start pitching your book to the media yet unless you've got something for them to read or if you're going to pitch it as do you want to do a review before my book comes out. But be honest about what you have. Um, never include an attachment when you're sending emails. They won't open them. And I would venture to say that most media professionals have their spam filters set up to not even accept emails with attachments. So if you have something you want to share with them that's outside of your very brief pitch, um, upload it to your website and create a link that they could link to it. 
um, create a media kit. That's where I mean, it, and it, it sounds intimidating, but basically, it's just a compilation of everything that the media is going to need from you in one spot. Because if it comes down to you and one other person, if they have to do one more click to find something else about you, they're going to the other person if they've provided everything that they need. So a media kit, I just want to share what's in the media kit. Um, it's a biography about you and your company bio, a description of products, services, or your book, um, you know, whatever it is you have, um, any prior media that you have. If you don't have prior media, you can include um, links to some blog posts that you've written or articles or things like that. Um, images, headshots, videos, all of this should be downloadable. You should be able to link to somebody to your YouTube channel and videos so they could see you in action. Um, and when you link to your YouTube channel, create playlists. Don't just send them to a YouTube channel with 60 videos in there. They're not going to look. So create a, a playlist of the ones that you would want them to see and make sure it's up on top. Because um, you know, you know, there's probably only two or three or four videos that you would want them to see. They're not going to sit there and watch, you know, a feature movie. They want, they need quick, they need to make a quick decision if you're the right person or not. So a couple of videos that are, really um, give them a flavor of what you can do and what you can provide, and make it easy for them to find. Um, a list of Q and A for the media. Many people don't include this in their media kits. I think it's crucial. I have had clients that have had interviews without even knowing that they were being interviewed because um, they had these questions and answers in their media kit, and a journalist pulled the questions and answers, downloaded an image, <laughs> included a link to a video, and they had an article. So it doesn't need to be pages of stuff. It could be you know four or five questions with answers. The other thing that it does is it's going to tell them it's, it's going to give them like a mock interview of what it's going to be like to interview you, even if they don't use those questions. It'll also maybe spark an idea, maybe something that they weren't thinking of yet. Maybe you've taken this to another another you know down another road that they they haven't thought of. So it's really important to put them in there because it gives them a whole different view into what you do and how you think. Um, a press release, if you have one, but press releases are becoming less and less relevant. Um, a speaker one sheet, so if you are a speaker, a speaker one sheet is a condensed version of your media kit. Um, and a book, if, you're, if this is an author's media kit or if you have products, it, uh, if, if it's an author, include a book excerpt and a book fact sheet. So that's like how many pages, how, you know, the trim size, all of those things, and a book. And um, if you have products, you want to in, in, include information about your products. Um, you know the, the ingredients and the um, um, you know the size of the packaging and um, um, you know all of those things. Like you know what the fabrics are made out of, um, how many you know what the SKU number is, and you know whatever they would need as far as um, sharing that information. So um, you want to include it all in one spot and. You want to make it easy for them because if it's all in one spot, you go up the like factor. Um, now, sharing your media. Once you get it, you got to share it everywhere. If you don't share it, it just sits there like a lump on a log. So you want to share it on all your social media sites. You want to ask other people to share it too. You want to include it in your media kit and your media page. You want to thank the journalist via email or on social media. I do both. You want to add the journalist to your media list because now you've got a media connection. <laughs> um, and you want to set up alerts to follow the media on Google Alerts and social mention, and you could also follow it in um, Hootsuite. Google Alerts is kind of phasing out a bit, so it's not as good as it used to be. And social mention is like Google Alerts, but it just focuses on social media. And it's super, super easy to use and free, and you just post in the title of the article, and it will, it will send you an email every time that shows somewhere. Um, but you know, these are not 100% um, you know, these sites. So if you've got stuff going on in the media, I would recommend part of your morning routine is you Google your name, you Google the name of articles that are out about you. So I want to introduce you to my system. Okay, These are all things from my system, but I want to introduce you to it because it's really special, and nobody else is doing this. Nobody else is sharing the things that I'm sharing in the way that I'm sharing it. And um, I want to share it with you because I have done this now for um, about nine months 
with a group of about 100 people, and the results are amazing. So I have worked in either social media PR or business in one form or another for 30 years, and what has become really apparent to me in the last year or so is that um, social media was built for my brain. <laughs> this is the way I think. This is the way I thought 25 years ago there just was no social media. So I really get it, and I understand it and, and use it in a way that most people don't. It's all about building the relationships. It's not about the numbers. It doesn't matter. I've had clients with 300 Facebook fans that have done phenomenally well. It's really about the quality of the people that you bring to you. Um, in the past two years, I've become really clear about what works, and I built it into a system. And I want to share this hashtag with you that the members of my program have been using the last couple of weeks. It's just hashtag this stuff works. And it really, really does. Um, so I would like for you to meet some of the members, and then I'm going to go into the program and tell you a little about that. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to join us because we are just getting ready to um, start another six-month round of this program. And I want every single small business in the world to have these tools because it changes everything. Um, so I want to introduce you to a few of my members, my clients. Um, they are incredibly special to me. And um, they have had tremendous results with social PR. They have built solid social media and PR strategies into the fabric of their businesses. This has up-leveled everything for them. They are playing with the same tools the big boys are playing with and the big girls. <laughs> and they're saving money. They're growing their social media. They're landing media. They're building their lists. They're getting clients. Their lives are changing. So some of the successes that they've had, they've been, I've, we've had five people get on TV in nine months by themselves. Radio shows, I can't even count how many radio shows. There's people starting their own radio shows. <laughs> um, book mentions, blogs, online media, magazines, print media, joint venture opportunities, Amazon bestseller lists without a campaign for a month at a time, book awards social media growth, relationship building, connecting with people they never in a million years they thought they'd have a relationship with. Not just, hey, how, hi, how are you, but an actual relationship and increased traffic in SEO. This is growing the sales and the growth of their businesses every single day, and in many cases in directions they never, ever expected. So I want to start where it started. My first social PR client um, her name was Ellen Surratt, and she's a hand model, and she had a line of anti-aging hand care products. And we had no budget. She was paying a PR firm $5,000 a month, and she didn't sell a thing. She was in every magazine, didn't sell anything. Um, we started together creatively using social media and PR strategies, and in eight months we sold $100,000 worth of hand cream. And we, um, she has since sold her business to a licensing company, and she's been on HSN at least eight times selling out twice. So this is where it all started. I started applying it to other businesses, other clients, and it worked every single time. Um, I also would like to introduce you to Ingrid Pruer. Ingrid was the first person to buy my program, and she's known as the baby sleep whisperer, and she teaches babies to sleep. And I only wish I knew her 12 years ago <laughs> uh, when my son didn't sleep. Um, but she, um, the benefits are countless, and the happy babies are, um, um, so, so what, what she's done, she got on TV. She got on TV with one of her clients. And she's just like, I mean, all of these, she got on the network news, and all of these people started calling her. And now she's helping all of these babies sleep. And she's like healing these families, because do you have any idea what it does to an entire household when you don't sleep for a few months? So um, Ingrid was the first person to sign on, and um, They'll always be my, my first, Ellen and Ingrid. <laughs> um, and some, the, here are some amazing results. This, uh, this is one of my favorite clients. Through Ellen, the hand model, we met Alana Wall. Alana at the time was 10 years old. She was the founder of, um, and CEO of nonprofit Polished Girls. Um, what they do is they go into um, hospitals and special needs facilities, and they polish the girl, nails of girls who are, are terminally ill or have frequent hospitalizations. Um, she is an amazing, amazing, amazing human being, as is her mother and her father, her entire family. They're all involved in this business. 
and now Ellen and I are too. <laughs> and um, I taught her mom how to do this, okay? Her mom got her on the Ellen DeGeneres show, the Jeff Probst show, the Disney Channel. She polishes nails backstage at New York Fashion Week, and she has just formed an alliance with um, Sally Hansen International, and um, she is going to be one of their primary sponsors for 2015. Um, incredible. They have chapters all over the world, and she is healing lives by going in and making girls that have um, <clears throat> not so normal lives feel like regular glittery, giggly girls. Um, Laura Clark, who is one of my favorite clients, she is my muse. Um, she has had such massive growth. Um, in a few months, Laura more than tripled her mailing list, Facebook likes, Twitter numbers, LinkedIn connections, and it's resulted in significant revenue growth. But more importantly, she learned how to become the personal brand. This is what I was talking about when the brand wraps around you. She learned how to bring that into her business, and it's created such a shift. Um, and the new role, it, it affects how she approaches everything that she does and her commitment to serve her clients and her potential clients. She, this has increased her confidence level like through the roof, so much so that she just announced that she's having her first live event, and I could not be prouder, more proud of her. And um, Lynanne Saperstein, who is my entrepreneurial daughter, I collect brilliant, smart, young entrepreneurs entrepreneurial women and I become their business mom. <laughs> Lenan is one of those women. And um, she is a business coach and she works with all kinds of trailblazing young entrepreneurs. And um, she has actually taken my system and built it into her clients' businesses. And she has gotten her clients um, TED, TEDx talk placements, major media coverage, features in magazines, um, Washington Post, Metro newspaper. One client is currently a contestant on um, ABC's The Taste, and another client landed a dream job of working as a food video expert for the New York Times. This is all from implementing these practical, simple systems. Um, Jessica Drummond. I had a conversation with Jessica just last night. Jessica from implementing all of this stuff, she has implemented the SEO. People are coming to her. Okay, she has a pelvic pain institute where she helps women get out of pain. And um, the LA Times found her, and they are um, including her in a six-page spread on, on pelvic pain that um, on the web is going to be shared with 250 major media outlets. She did nothing. They found her through her videos. They're going to feature her videos and push them out to 250 media outlets. I mean, in addition to that, she has met colleagues on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, paid speaking gigs in three different countries, um, podcasts, telesummits. I mean, it's amazing. She, I spoke to her last night, and she said every single day she gets a media opportunity, and she doesn't even try anymore. It just comes to her. Carrie Conn, in a day, she was on Twitter for about two weeks. She followed somebody. The next day, she got a phone call at 8 o'clock in the morning and was invited to speak on stage at um, a, a very high-level event with about 500 of her ideal clients in the room. One day, okay? She, she is now so hooked to her Hootsuite dashboard. It, it, you know, she, she calls me or, or, or messages me every single day with somebody that she found that she never thought she'd find. Lori Flacker, this is probably the only person in the program that had PR experience in the past, but she had traditional PR. She didn't know the digital side. She has a client that um, had an, uh, he's an author. He had a book out for three years. It was dead in the water. She started implementing these systems. Within a month, she started getting media coverage. He's been on the Amazon bestseller list. He sold thousands and thousands of books. He had 59,000 hits on his website in one day. And um, he's now writing two more books, and he has already got the media lined up for the books. They're not even written yet. So um, Lori is basically going to buy anything I sell her. <laughs> um, the elements, um, you need to have um, a keyword analysis. So you, and nothing, nothing scary and big. Just you've got to know what those words are, and you've got to use them. Brand, uh, you need to brand and optimize your social media sites. Social media dashboard for business intelligence, not just for posting. PR collateral, your media kit, press release, pitch letter, media lists. You need relationships with the target media, connecting with the media. Um, free and low-cost resources to find media opportunities. You need to share it, and you need regular engagement. 
Um, you also need to know your message, know your market, your keywords, be consistent. Um, use tools to save time. Get help. You can't do this all yourself. Have a plan, but be ready to change that plan because the opportunities come and jump on the opportunities. Share, 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 and sh not just your stuff. Share everybody's stuff. Be authentic. Be yourself. Do, you do not need two personalities. You are one person. Um, track your results. Nothing major, nothing big. Just like, you know, see what's working and do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. Um, focus on the relationships and the conversations and everything else will follow. Don't worry about the numbers. It's all inside my program. The system, how do you do your own keyword analysis? How do you brand and optimize your social media accounts? How do you match social media in a few minutes every day? How do you create plans and track your results? Um, what do you need to pitch the media? How do you share your media online? And how do you find your target market and build relationships? We go through all of this. Um, the modules, um, there's an introduction. Then we go through keywords, SEO, and analytics, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter management, LinkedIn, um, social media management with Hootsuite and some other things, um, Pinterest, Instagram, Google+, and then we have the three um, PR modules, preparing to pitch the media, pitching the media, and sharing and tracking your media. Then there's bonuses. The Facebook community, which is like my favorite place in the world to be. Um, they're so active, and everybody is helping each other. It's amazing. I mean, these, th this is my family, and everybody that comes there I mean, they, they're becoming family. <laughs> they're all doing things with each other. They're, 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 they're helping each other. They're opening up opportunities for each other. It's, it's, it's just lovely to watch and to, to be part of. Um, um, and there's tons of support there, too. Um, the, the tips, worksheets, resources, templates throughout the entire program, current and targeted media lists. We give you their email addresses, their social media handles, how you get in touch with them, what they like, what they don't like. We give this all to you. Um, the media lists alone are probably worth the investment of the program. Um, social PR resources page. So you know, we share. You know, I test out all this stuff. If it works, I share it with you. If it doesn't work, I don't. Um, special report, 10 social media blunders that will tarnish your star quality and how to avoid them. So basically, what not to do. Um, and then there's three levels of the program, and the elite and the VIP levels have monthly Q&A and expert calls. Um, so why do you need this? Regardless of the type of business that you have, you must be on social media. Regardless of what you do, people will check you out online, and you need to be well represented. SEO is changing daily. Best practices are great content, using the keywords conversationally. You can't just stuff them in there and put them in you know, just one word after the other. You need to build the words around them to make a conversation. And landing media and social media engagement. Basically, you want to piggyback on what other people are doing right. You want to learn from people who are doing this right. You want to model people that are doing this right. You want to find the people that you want to have the conversations with. Um, so how does it all work? The modules, um, a new module is delivered every other Tuesday, and each module includes a strategy presentation, um, a series of how-to videos and documents, uh, and all the content is indexed so it's easy to reference. Everything is recorded and posted in the membership site so you have access to it all. Um, the private Facebook community, it's the Social PR Club, I, there, there are just not enough positive things that I could say about this. We have over 100 amazing members. Everybody is sharing successes, engaging with fellow members. I mean, like real relationships and business alliances are being formed here. Um, ask questions. I have people on my team. We have Rose who helps with SEO. We have Jess who helps with PR and social media. We have Dory and, 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 and Darcy that hold it all together. And they all help answer questions, as well as the members. I mean, these people are getting so good at this. They're answering before I can answer, and they're good. I'm learning things from them. I love when that happens. Um, opportunities and relationships, they are happening. <clears throat> they're happening left and right. Um, so what can you expect? If you do the work, you can expect that your social media following will grow in a very targeted way, that you'll have all of the collateral strategies, resources to easily and quickly become your own publicist. 
a public you know, PR firms are charging two, three, four, five, six, up to ten thousand dollars a month for what is included in this program that you could build into your own business that you can train somebody in your business to do for you to help you with the things that you know can be outsourced to somebody else that's one of the other things we do in this program every module we go through what you need to do as the business owner and what you can have somebody else to do for you um, you will quickly become a sought after expert in your field I'm telling you this happens in a matter of like two months if you do the work <laughs> Um, you will connect with amazing people, both within the program and outside of the program. And I overshare. I always overshare. So if you expect an inch, you're going to get like 17 feet. Um, the possibilities, they're endless. They are really endless. Anything that you can imagine can happen can really happen, and you can target it to happen. Okay, you have some choices. There are three different levels of access. Um, the first one is DIY. And um, that is access to all of the content and membership in the Social PR Club, which is, which is our supportive Facebook community. Um, Elite is access to the content and the Facebook community, plus the Q&A calls and the expert calls, which are really, really valuable. Um, and VIP is everything that's in Elite, plus we will create a custom media list specifically for you and a custom keyword analysis for you. And then throughout the six-month um, period of the program, you'll get three 30-minute strategy calls with me um, at the beginning and the middle and the end. Um, so just to go a little deeper, the content, 12 modules starting with an intro, go, we go through the social media modules, and we end with PR. All are available in a private membership site. There are templates, strategies, resources, and like anything that you can possibly need. <laughs> uh, media opportunities are shared regularly, both through me and other people in the, in the program. Um, interesting things are happening amongst the members. They are really forming together. and. Um, and just in the last month or so, things have really gone into a much deeper place. Um, Q&A calls, and this is for the elite and the VIP levels. We have three calls a month held on Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And um, they're, they're content specific. So there is one call on SEO and keywords, one call on social media, and one call on PR. So um, you, know, you can listen in on all of them or just the one that you need. And the reason that I do this is people can um, come with very specific questions and we get deep on these calls. Plus the recordings are really useful because if you have a PR question, you don't want to listen to 10 minutes of Twitter questions. So um, you know, this is what we've done for the last six months and it's been working out very well. Um, and all of the calls are recorded and available for replay in the membership site, plus you have access to all the calls that are already there. So we have you know, nine months of calls that are already there. Expert calls. Each month we have a guest expert, and this is also for Elite and VIP, um, and they share some really cool stuff to help you maximize the program. These are also held on Thursdays from 1 to 2 Eastern Time, and um, all the calls are recorded and available for replay, and you have access to the last six experts as well. We've had people that um, are experts in crowdfunding, automation. We've got a lawyer coming up. Um, I've got a person coming up that books radio shows. So we've got all kinds of interesting people. Um, and um, you know, the, um, really uh, great alliances have formed from these calls as well. Um, you can bring help. Now, this is something people told me. I was out of my mind. But I want you to be a huge success, and I know that you need help. This is a lot of work. This is a huge piece of your business. So I invite you to bring a team member along for the ride. Simply fill out a form, and your right-hand person gets access to the content and is invited to all the Q&A calls. And this is only on the elite and VIP level, but um, you know it's free. Most people charge for something like this, but I know for you to be a success with this, you need help. I don't want you to learn this and then have to go to your VA or your, your, uh, your team member and say, well, now you have to do this, 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 and this. No, say, I just sat in on this call. Go in and learn how to do these things, and we need to apply this to our business. They go into the membership site, and all of the information is there for them to learn how to do it. You don't have to teach them. You need to know the strategy. Um, so the VIP level will also get the three 30-minute strategy calls. So I'll send you a questionnaire to get 
you thinking? And at the beginning, middle, and end of the program, we'll send you. Uh, we'll spend 30 minutes totally focused on your business, on your goals. We will record these so you can go back to them. And what I can do in 30 minutes is pretty damn amazing. <laughs> um, custom media lists. We'll figure out the media that should be reporting on you, and we'll give you a cheat sheet for pitching. And we will create a custom media contact list, including their name, their outlet, their email, their phone number, their address. Um, their social media handles and how they prefer to be contacted and whatever else we could find. It's priceless. Um, custom keyword analysis will figure out the keywords that you should be using in your online copy so people find you. This saves you mountains of time and will also provide strategies for using the, the keywords to maximize your visibility. So are you ready? You want to come and join us? Do you want to be a social PR celebrity? There are three different levels. DIY is 997. Elite is 1297. VIP is 1997. Um, you can just go to totalsocialprsystem.com and sign up. There are single, three, and six pay options on all levels. Um, the next round is going to start on March 18th. So, um, you know, we want you to get in there and we want you to. Um, you know, start applying this to your business as soon as you can, and we want you to come and join us because it's so cool. These people are amazing. They should, everybody should, everybody should have people like this. Um, and there's some surprises. The first five new members will be invited to a private 15-minute strategy session with me. Um, so 50 each one individual. I could do a lot in a few minutes. And then the, the next 10. So the, the next 10 members. So that would be, you know. Um, the first 15 people will get something, so the next 10 members will receive a custom branded Facebook cover image. So we'll get some info from you and we'll whip you up a beautiful image. Um, so again, it's totalsocialprsystem.com. Come and join us, please, 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 please. These are the levels, um, you know, the different, the different things. So DIY is the content and Facebook. Elite is the content, Facebook Q&A calls, expert training. And VIP is all of that plus a media list, keyword report, and three strategy calls. We're going to start on March 18th, and we're going to go for six months. Um, questions. I want to open up for questions. So if you have a question, please just star six. I went a little bit long on the presentation, but if you're willing to stick with me, I'll stay on the line longer and answer any questions you have. Um, if you've got to run, we're also going to have a Q&A call on um, March 13th, and we'll send you links on how you could sign up for that. So if you have to run, that's okay too. But um, go ahead and ask the questions, and um, I'm happy to answer them. Just star six or unmute yourself to come in and, and ask a question. I see one from um, um, Chara. Chara, you're interested in the program, but your business is brand new and you don't have products yet. Can you do it in the fall? Absolutely. Just be on my mailing list, um, and you know we'll be offering this, you know, regularly. So th this system is not going away. We've just begun. <laughs> um, and I'm going to just scroll back and see if I have any more questions here. Okay, one of, one of the clients, Carrie, just said, um, it's not just a program, it's a support team. Um, it is a support team. It really is. And, you know, we keep track of all of the updates and things that are going on, and, um, and we share it. We share everything. Um, Olga asked, um, um, are we able to work internationally? Absolutely. We've got clients in Germany, in the UK, um, somewhere else in Europe too. So uh, this, this works anywhere. It works for any type of business, and it works anywhere in the world. Just going back and looking to see if there's anything else here.
Okay, Mark is asking, um, how does Google recognize um, rate content is good? Um, well, they want to make sure that it is, you know, conversational. That um, there's a balance of. Um, you know of what the, of of content. I mean, they they base they have different algorithms and um, actually, you know, Rose, if you're on, could you pop in and ask? Rose is our SEO specialist. She knows this way better than I do. So, Rose, if you're on, could you just pop in and respond to that? Because you'll you'll do a better job than I will. <laughs> just give her a minute. She may have dropped off, but um, so basically, Google weighs um, the content, and they weigh it based on um, you know different words that are used, and algorithms, and um, ad rates, and um, comments, and you know like so. So they they weigh all of those different things, um, and they also look to see if you're spamming. Spamming by what I mean by spamming is like using your keywords. Let's say you have ten keywords, and if you put those ten keywords together, but you don't use them like conversationally, and you get penalized for that. Um, so you know they, they they monitor this carefully, and um, the better you behave and do what Google likes, the higher up they push you. So um, just by knowing, um, you know how to structure. Um, the words that you should use, and it's not—it's really not a big deal because it's just you know, when when you write from what you know, it, it's it's automatically just within their guidelines. So um, I really think like a group like this would have to go out of their way to to piss Google off. I um, um, hope that answered your question. And Katie had a question: How do you wade through all the noise of social media to actually find the real content you want to follow? That's Hootsuite, um, and that's going through Hootsuite to, um, you know, use the, you know, define the columns, the, the streams in Hootsuite with the words um, that the people are using that you want to connect with. So, um, and you don't need to find every single person and see what they're talking about. If you find a handful of people, and this this will usually be your influencers. That would be your influencers of people you want to be when you grow up in your business, or the media that reports on people in your industry, see the words that they're using and start following those words, start following those people, start following the lists of people that they follow, and you'll quickly get into those conversations. Um, Denise is asking, um, do you find um, corporate IT functions blocking your signatures? Um, no, no, not when, not when it's done through Ystamp. I think that they kind of um, they, they they could work through the firewall issues. Um, they they block um, images. Like if you just put an image in your in your uh, signature, sometimes they'll block the images. So you know that people won't see that image that that often has. Um, Information that that you want people to see. Um, so um, I find by using Wise Stamp, they're they're kind of you know working with the firewalls, and it's not been an issue at all. Okay, I'm just. I want you to see if there's any other questions. Looking a lot like my Facebook page here, my Facebook group. <laughs> um, okay, I think I got them all. Um, does anybody have any other questions that they would like to ask? I'm happy to answer them. and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. So just, um, just um, you know, star six to ask a question or unmute yourself. And um, Oh, I just see one, another one from Alga. Um, what level um, do you suggest for an international client? Um, um, I, I, 
all got, I, I would say the elite level is great. Um, um, the Q&A calls are really helpful. The expert calls are helpful. Um, the media list um, you know, they're, they're mostly media in the U.S., but um, I find that my international clients want to get media in the U.S. And um, the free resources that we provide, you know, for you to connect with media, um, they're all international. And Twitter is just really the best way. Twitter and Muckrack are, are the best way to connect with the media. Um, so th they're both internationally represented sites. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, you're welcome, Olga. Um, okay, and now we have another question. I was wondering what photo is best um, to use when you coach artists um, and are also a performing artist. Should I use a photo of me dancing? You should use, for, for, for your profile photo, you should use a headshot where you're smiling and your direct eye contact. You can use the other photos of you doing different things throughout your backgrounds and you know in your different sites. But that profile photo, that's, that's, that's the face you have on when you're shaking somebody's hand when you meet them. You want eye contact. And even though there's a computer and there's like, you know, cyberspace between you, that it's a very direct connection. Um, Bryn, Bryn is asking, um, will we start on the 18th with an intro call or Module 1? Um, the in, on, on the 18th, it's, it's going to be Module 1, which is an introduction. On the 18th, you'll get Module 1, which is the introduction, and Module 2, which is SEO and keywords. And then um, from that point on, every two weeks, you'll get another module on Tuesdays. And um, those modules come you know, you just get an email that that module is now available to you in the membership site. And on Thursdays, we have we have the live calls, and um, we also the Facebook group is going all the time. And I'm on there, Rose is on there, Dory is on there, Jess is on there, and we're all answering questions. And the members too. Um, you know, some of these members have been with me from the beginning, and um, you know, many of them were private clients before I even started the program. So they've been doing this a while, and they're seasoned. Um, oh, uh, Sarah has a question. Um, she wants to get started on Hootsuite or Buffer, but she's intimidated. Any advice? Um, I use Hootsuite and Buffer, and I'll tell you why. Hootsuite I use for management. This is my business intelligence tool. Buffer is really easy for scheduling. And um, um, I use the paid version of both, but you can use the free version of them. And um, the other thing I like about Buffer is you can connect it to a Bitly link to your Bitly account, and you can get really good analytics on your links. Um, so I, I use them both. And to get started with Hootsuite, um, I have a blog post. Um, if you go um, to my, um, I'll, 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 what I'll do is um, I will wait. Hold on one second. I will. I'll, I'll post a link to this blog post for you. Um, it's a blog post on um, using Hootsuite, and it gives a, it gives a lot of really good information. So just give me one second, I will get that for you. Um, but I, I use them both. Give me one minute. Actually, this is kind of slow. Dory, if you're listening, can you can you go to my blog and get the link for the blog post? Um, um, that's about listening to your social media and just post it in the chat. That would be great. Thank so you. So, Donna, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, everyone. This is Lori. And I just wanted to say that um, w working with your program has been the best money that I have spent. And anyone who knows me knows that I have spent, wow many tens of thousands of dollars in the last few years on um, programs, probably close to about $70,000 on different educational programs. And I will tell you right now, this was the best money that I spent. I put that in the chat window. It was just, I'll tell you, it, it's the best money that I spend. I get so much value out of it every single day. It allows me to be better at my job, help my clients more. My clients are, are excelling. I'm excelling through this. 
and it just it, it just keeps getting better and better. And this morning, just an example, you sent me the information from James Clear, the article that he wrote. We're already in contact with him about having him work with one of my clients. So that's and it's just been a few hours. Okay, so you know if I would have been able to get his telephone number, I would have already been I would have already made that happen. But I mean, just this one thing that happens on a regular basis. I get information from you. Do follow this one. Did you see this? Check this out. And this is really helping. So it feels in a way like you're working for me. <laughs> and I love that because you know I I'm I'm not seeing everything. And even the things that the other people in the group post. Did you see this? Did you see that? I mean, it's wonderful. We all, I appreciate that. And then when somebody has something going, we we all get there. We all, you know, support them and vote for them and help to, you know, and really spread that. So it's really having a support system as well as someone at the helm that's, you know, kind of driving you forward. I've met so many great people and been able to do so much more than I ever would have been able to do on my own. So I want to thank you, um, you know, and I, I tell you this all the time. So, you know, and anybody who gets those 15 minute sessions, they are, th those, those are going to be fabulous, golden. So, you know, get on board, do it and start learning because this is absolutely the best program that you can get. So that's it. Sorry. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Lori is the one that I mentioned in my client success stories that has taken her client's book from dead in the water to like, <laughs> you know, selling thousands in a couple of days. So, um, um, you know, she's she's really she's really rocking and rolling with this. And um, and like she she's a great example of what happens when you build it. Because when you build it, you start with pitching and pushing and, you know, going out there and connecting. And then something just clicks and it turns around. And then it all comes, like the flood comes back at you. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to pitch so hard anymore. It just comes to you. And um, one of the things that, you know, I, I mean, I've spent the last year building this. It's built. And um, now I am starting to go out there and really connect with the media and bring opportunities back. So, um, you know, the opportunities that are going to start coming back now are going to be pretty significant. And it's just, you know, it's just part of being in the club. Um, does anybody have any other, um, um, any other questions or, or anything that I can answer for you, um, either about the program or about social PR or any of the clients or anything at all? I'm happy to answer anything. Um, oh, Reddit. I'm sorry. I, I just saw that. Well, hold on one second. Let me go back and check. Back. Um, Reddit for sharing media. Reddit, um, Reddit is like a social bookmarking site, and they're very good for sharing media. There's Reddit. There is. There is. Um, um, wait, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna I'm getting an echo. So I'm gonna, um, there's there's Reddit. There is um, you know Stumble Upon, Delicious. Um, there are uh, like tons and tons of social bookmarking sites. Um, it's really good to um, share on there because you you open up you 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 open up um, you know the opportunity for many, many more people to see it, to share it. Um, the one thing I will say is if you're going to share things on there, be ready to share other people's things too. Because um, if you're not, if it's not reciprocal, people will stop sharing your stuff. So, um, you know, just you know, be prepared to do that. Um, and oh, wait, when Michelle asked, when you share, do you just post? Um, I like to post the description with it because you could build your keywords into the description and you could put tags in the description, which will help you um, land into the right audiences. Um, with any of this work online, you always want to think keywords, tags, 
Um, you want because this is what puts you into the right audiences. This is what gets you into the right conversations. When you just randomly post things and you just use words that sound good to you in your head, um, you're just putting stuff out there into this big, vast wasteland of the internet. Okay, um, the way to be targeted with this and the way to have real fast, rapid success is to know what those words are and use them, because those words will get you into um, um, will get you into the right conversations and the right avenues. Um, oh, Carrie, Carrie wants me to talk about my LinkedIn billboard speech. <laughs> okay, um, LinkedIn has um, a feature for, called business pages, and business pages don't take a whole lot of work to fill out. You've got all of this information already, so you could probably spend about two hours putting together your your, your LinkedIn company page. And LinkedIn is notorious for having lurkers. So you want to give them something to look at while they're lurking, and that's what the business page is. It is essentially a billboard for your business. You can put your videos there. You can put client testimonials there, case studies, um, all kinds of things. And what, what I see happening quite often is the lurkers will lurk. And the lurkers are often, you know, you know, pretty big people because on LinkedIn, a lot of the uh, C-level executive types are on LinkedIn, and they're actually doing the lurking. They're not having somebody lurk for them. <laughs> and um, they will sit and they will look at your company page, and then they'll go look at somebody else's, and then they'll come back and look at yours. And then they'll go look at somebody else's, and they'll come back and look at yours. And they'll do that five or six or ten times, and then they're going to pick up the phone. So there have been stories of amazing connections made, lots of speaking opportunities, um, you know, corporate contracts, um, book deals, because somebody was found through a company page. So I say the uh, two hours or so it would take to put that together is totally worth your time. You don't need to spend a huge amount of time, you know, doing anything to it. Once it's set up, you can post things there. Um, they just recently. Um, started allowing people to um, respond and post as their business page. Um, the other thing that's really cool is if you have people that are on your team or employees, you can link them to your business page, and um, it links to all of the people that they're connected to. The same thing happens with groups. If you link a group that you're connected to on your business page, it shows your business page to everybody in that group. So it's a great way with not too much effort to get yourself out there. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? We've gone a little bit over, but um, I'm happy to answer. Um, but if there are no other questions, I'll just oh, wait. We got one. Um, do we need to use a business page instead of a personal page on Facebook? Yes. If you have a business, you need a business page. Um, um, Facebook does not do very much um, marketing with personal profiles, so you, you need to have you need to have both. Um, and uh, again, it's not that hard to set this stuff up. We go through step by step by step by step on how to do everything, um, and how to do it right, and not, you know, we don't make it hard. So um, um, you need that. And then on Pinterest, also, if you have a personal Pinterest account, I recommend switching that to a business account. And you can you can um, you can set up, you know, boards on Pinterest. You know, based on you know personal or business, and um, um, you can organize them. You know, however makes sense for your business. But uh, what happens on all these social media sites? If they have a personal and a business option, the personal option isn't going to have the marketing opportunities. So you want to have the business option so you can market your business. I hope that answered your question, Marianne. Anybody else? Okay, so people are starting to say thanks. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's time to say goodbye. I'm just going to do one more slide um, to say thank you. And um, if you want to come and join us, it's totalsocialprsystem.com. We are going to send you all an email um, um, with um, an invitation to another Q and A call. So if you have any other questions at all, just come and ask me my ask questions. I'm happy to answer. Um, I just put the link back in, this, in the chat box again. It's totalsocialprsystem.com. 
and um, we start on the 18th, and I would love to have you join us. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to all of um, the people I know and the new people that I've just met today. Um, also, come and like me on Facebook um, and, you know, get in the conversation there, too. I share all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, comment on my blogs and tell me what you want to know about. I'm happy to post um, you know, to, you know, to post content about what you want to know. So if there's anything that you want more info on, um, just let me know. Um, thank you all very, very much, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.